What's going on there, folks? Good evening, a good Saturday evening. What's going on? It's party night out here, right? Saturday night, the weekend party time. Yeah, not on this end. <laughs> Definitely not into the party in mood tonight. Uh, it is Saturday, January 7th, 2023. It's about uh, 8 51 p.m. here along the West Coast in California where it's raining, windy, and about 49 degrees out here. Got some wind gusts coming in about 30 miles an hour. Uh, we are expecting gusts potentially up to about 50 miles per hour. So watching that pretty closely here for some potential power outages around the Northern California area. Uh, 3.6, I seen that down here into the Indonesia area. Aside from that, a 1.8 up into the Alaska region, the latest earthquake there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Now we're getting a little bit of swarming going on here south of Japan, watching that pretty closely. I'm going to go over here to the uh, USGS map here on the 24-hour uh, map. Here is the swarming area kicking up here into the Japan Trench. Now, we're getting a little bit of back and forth here between deep earthquakes and surface ruptures. Uh, surface ruptures up here around the subduction level um, where this earthquake struck here, this 4.5, and some deeper movement quakes up here, uh, I should say down here, uh, into the subduction zone itself with a 4.7 and the most recent a 4.6 so uh that's a good indicator here some stress in the region of course the curl kamchaka trench up here is on my watch list for a mega quake here uh it, it's coming up for sure uh they did have a 4.6 141 kilometers deep into the uh, area of the curl kamchaka trench um, if we go back like over the past a uh, year or so, you'll see that there's been a lot of deeper movement earthquakes here along the Kurokamchaka Trench with very minimal surface rupture up here around the uh, locked area around where all this stress builds up. So this uh, this region is definitely building up here for the, the next good size quake. Uh, into the Taiwan area, one earthquake this morning. It looks like a 4.2, 27 kilometers deep there in that area into the philippine trench we did see a 5.0 coming in earlier this afternoon looks like um, 147 kilometers deep here got to watch this area as well deep earthquake movement down into the subduction zones indicate some uh, regional stress in the area and of course when you got that regional stress there's always a potential to see some further large-scale activity upstream along that locked area of uh, subduction zones um, out here in the sea off the Philippines area, a 4.5 coming in from yesterday. All right, take a look over here around Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands area. The latest earthquake shows a 4.7 earlier, uh, about noontime, 80 kilometers deep. Now, prior to that, this morning, we did see a 4.6 into the Fiji area. Super deep earthquake, 583 kilometers deep. Some older movement around Tonga and also some older activity here in the North Island, New Zealand area. Nothing really shown up uh, as far as recent activity goes in the North Island area. Uh, there was the 4.0 and the 3.1. Uh, and just right off the bat, we'll go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the GeoNet servers and uh, see what's going on there across our friends in the New Zealand area. 2.3 about three hours ago, 2.6 as well. Uh, a couple of smaller microquakes down, um, actually North Island, New Zealand, but a larger earthquake down here about five hours ago into the South Island region. Looks like that is along the plate boundary that sits off the uh, just, well, it's kind of just on the western coast there of New Zealand, 3.9. I do want to check out the all magnitudes map here. See what we have for any, um, maybe some unusual activity. Most of it looks fairly small. Uh, a couple deleted events as well. So in that respect, we will turn to the volcanic drums here. A little bit of seismograph station monitoring. And uh, a little bit of uptick here. You can see that uh, four-pointer showing up uh, almost 24 hours ago now around the, uh, I believe that struck just north of the uh, Taupo supervolcano. Nothing major going on around the Taupo supervolcano currently. But there's some some earth, some other earthquake activity showing up across the region and uh, specific volcanic drums here indicating that earthquake activity. All right, uh, let's see the Big Island of Hawaii. Latest earthquake activity there shows uh, some movement of the southern end here of the uh, Mauna Loa area. Now 
Gotta watch this here because we know that the tilt is building here. But say, say potentially there's a continual inflation here at the summit and there's just not enough magma here or enough pressure to uh, maybe create a fissure out there to uh, spew that lava out. Uh, that could turn in turn uh, produce a little bit different eruption in a, in a certain area, maybe like outside of the northeast rift zone. There's doesn't have to happen in the northeast rift zone. It, there's been many other eruptions uh, around the area. So we'll watch that pretty closely here. This oddball earthquake activity at the southern end of Mauna Loa um, for some potential movement. 4.8 kilometers deep. A uh, little odd one there, so continuing to watch that activity. Uh, let me go over here to the volcanic hazard map here, and we'll check out Kilauea Volcano. See what's going on out there on the big island as far as the latest update goes from the USGS. It was put out, looks like this morning time period here. Uh, summit eruption of Kilauea Volcano within the crater continued over the past 24 hours. All recent eruptive activity has been confined to the crater. No significant changes have been observed at the summit or in either rift zone. Um, summit tilt meters have recorded deflation over the past 24 hours. Volcanic tremor remains above background levels and sulfur dioxide emission rates of approximately uh, this amount was measured. Not a huge amount. Uh, no unusual activity has been noted along the east rift zone or southwest rift zone. Um, I'm just trying to see here. Doesn't look like there's been any other significant changes there across the uh, area of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, up here around Mauna Loa, seismograph stations are still offline. And uh, looking at the data here, not a whole lot going up here around the, the Mauna Loa area summit region. Uh, earthquake activity in the distant uh, away from the seismograph station here. You can kind of see these... Uh, Kind of a thicker line, but not well-defined spikes uh, indicating that earthquake activity here shown up is uh, not localized. All right, let's see what else we have here. Um, South America region, one earthquake, 4.9. Earlier last night, but that's about it. Um, a little bit of movement around Guatemala and off the coast of Mexico here. Now the West Coast activity... Still remains relatively quiet. We had one earthquake here along the Calaveras Fault Zone, a 2.4 coming in this morning. But aside from that, things are very uh, minimal in terms of earthquake activity out here along the West Coast. <coughs> Excuse me, a little concerning. Um, let's see what else. Alaska region, very typical movement up there once again. Uh, although we're getting a little, you guys notice that little cluster of quakes here across the Cook Inlet region. Uh, now, this area does see some rather large earthquakes on occasion, but right now quite a few ones and twos, but definitely a noticeable increase here across the Cook Inlet and portions of the Anchorage region. I'm trying to get this update in before the power goes out. I hear the wind outside kind of picking up. Um, 5.2 off the coast of Morocco. That was from this morning time period, about 12:15 uh, or so in the a.m., uh, not a whole lot going on further throughout the Middle East areas. Uh, looking at the EMSC model, there is some movement across the Java Trench. A couple three spewing out across there. And um, what have we got there? 1.3 California. Um, far as noticeable activity goes here across the region, definitely uh, a lack of activity across the Eastern Pacific. Uh, across the California region. And that could be due to the uh, that teeter-totter effect we chat about here a lot on the channel. Um, and right now, it definitely looks like it is leaning towards the west, uh, western Pacific and adjacent plates, a westward pressure movement here, uh, indicative here across the Java Trench. But also that swarm here um, just off the coast of Japan. Got to watch that pretty closely. Um, this area is definitely a very sensitive region. And uh, it's got quite a bit of stress built up there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on across the area of Yellowstone. And uh, let's see what we got for Trimmer map tonight. Looks like about 104 epicenters of Trimmer, all confined to the Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Island range up there, uh, about the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. 
All right, uh, solar weather activity, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, 20 for, uh, 20% chance for an X flare, and they've elevated the 10% chance here of a proton event that is due to these large sunspot regions currently growing and also facing Earth. Uh, 3181's getting pretty massive. 3183 is growing in dynamic complexi uh, complexity as well. And 3182, gotta watch that one. That is the one that just recently produced an X flare. But this one here is growing uh, very dynamically here. And that is uh, facing Earth directly. Uh, this sunspot region over here, 31, oh, what is that sunspot region? 3182. Uh, we'll be rotating into view here pretty soon, and that does harbor a potential for some X flares, possibly. So we will watch that uh, closely. And looking at um, the current data coming in here, notice that popcorn chart. And I, I kind of call it a popcorn chart because, well, because uh, it's elevated here. We're, we're looking at some elevated conditions here. It goes from about neutral. We get these little popcorn kernels here popping up and uh, getting hotter and hotter. And, uh, well, you, if you can imagine, solar flare activity increasing. And uh, we're almost into the M flare category here with that popcorn level. Uh, so we'll watch that pretty closely uh, as these sunspots are evolving and getting fairly unstable. There's a couple different regions here, as you can see, 3182. Two. Uh, stretching across here on the southern uh, portion of the sun. All these sunspots harbor a potential for a strong flare or two. We'll watch that closely, folks. Uh, a little bit of unsettled conditions there at the higher latitudes with the aurora forecast. Uh, no major solar storming expected. Uh, looks green across the board for now until we get potentially... Uh, a massive CME earth directed or a major coronal hole. And there's not really uh, any major coronal holes uh, currently facing Earth. 62 up here is not going to be geo effective. It's way north uh, on the sun. Look at that image right there. What is that? You guys see that little spewing here of the. Uh, well, that's actually a really awesome looking feature. Just barely noticeable, but uh, sometimes, I, and I'm certain if this was uh, off on the western or eastern limb, we'd be able to see that same thing. But there's a really cool feature of the uh, uh, prominences and the uh, awesome features there on the sun. Um, let's see what else we got. So, weather activity out here. We got quite a bit of rain coming in again, and there's our next system out here along the west coast. I've been busy all day trying to um, get uh, data off of my hard drive. And I'm not joking, um, 83,000 files right here that I'm trying to get off of an external hard drive. And um, that's because uh, I think I was hacked. I, I believe I was hacked here from um, remotely from someone. I, can't, I don't know who it is. I can't prove it. Uh, but uh, it's very suspect because I have seen that hard drive window open. It's an external hard drive I use here on the computer. It was uh, open remotely, and uh, ever since that happened, the drive was corrupted. So I'm having to spend 100 bucks to um, get that data off of the hard drive before it completely becomes inaccessible. Not for sure what's going on. Somebody doesn't like me, but hey, you know what? We live in a world full of, of, uh, of stuff like that. But we'll continue to, uh, you know... Sometimes the punches there, they, they come and go. The blows come and go. And the only thing I'm going to do is get back up and just continue with the uh, with the channel. Okay, so our current storm coming in. Some good, impressive rainfall rates. There's a lot of lightning kicking off here on the Northern California coast. I was looking at that just a little bit ago. Uh, in fact, a severe thunderstorm kicked off with a um, water spout potential here in Northern California there off the coast of Eureka. But that's coming in tonight. Um, there's another strong system coming in late Sunday night, Monday, with some very impressive rainfall rates and potential flooding once again across the areas of Northern California. And back behind that, another system on Wednesday. And uh, that system there kind of spins offshore. But it does bring some uh, rainfall into the next, next weekend era. And uh, Southern California is going to get some activity as well. 
as we head into the next next week. But either way, man, there's just a, a lot of rainfall coming in here, folks. And uh, last night, this kind of backed off a little bit. Um, but if you notice today, um, you know, 24 hours later, we're looking at the rainfall uh, accumulation here continuing along the West Coast. So these models way far out sometimes bounce back and forth in terms of the uh, accuracy. But uh, it's kind of pointing towards some further rainfall even in the extended forecast. So it's, uh, it's a soggy one out there. It's a soggy one. And uh, I can't wait to see what the drought looks like here in the West Coast after this is all said and done. I'm pretty certain this is going to put a major dent in that drought uh, that uh, has been hanging around here for the past couple of years. And um, I think my trees are loving it. The property is loving it. The land and the trees are loving it. Uh, it's definitely needed out here along the West Coast. All right, guys, um, I think that's about it. That's all I got here tonight, Saturday night. Um, 2.3 coming into Puerto Rico right now. Just watch the Japan area, folks. There's a lot of strain built up. Japan is one of the most, um, well, the most built up slip areas in the world as uh, far as subduction zones go. These trenches here around the Izu Trench northward through the Japan Trench and the Curl Kamchaka Trench accumulate an incredible slip rate in a short amount of time. So it doesn't take hundreds of years uh, for the potential stress to build up in creating a large earthquake in that region. So watch the Japan and the Curl Kamchaka Trench. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow, Sunday. I'm going to be out um, looking at a couple reservoirs out here along Northern California. I uh, might even check out the Sacramento River, see what we're looking at as far as the uh, flood stage potential goes. Uh, and I think Tuesday will be the main day uh, for that uh, observation because we're supposed to be forecasted into the flood stage on Tuesday for portions of the Sacramento River uh, here in Northern California. So we'll continue to watch that monitor it and I will be out there reporting on it. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime. Stay safe out there. Peace out, everyone.